Hello, my name's Ed Frawley. My wife and I own Learburg. Today I'm going to talk about a question and answer that was sent in to us about a puppy that's doing a lot of resource guarding. And it's a pretty common situation with certain puppies or certain breeds of puppies. I'll read them and then we'll talk about it. I'll read the email and then we'll talk about it. Hi, Cindy. Cindy's my wife. I have a four-month Catahoula puppy. He's been guarding everything. It starts with the food. I've fed him from my hand for several weeks. He is now okay with my hand in the bowl, but occasionally growls when I stroke him while he's eating his food. He's guarding his bed by growling, but a quick scruff solved that, and that hasn't returned. Now he's guarding his tug rope, though he wants to play. When he's chewing it, he will growl when approached. What's your recommendations for behavior modification and management in this situation? Good question. A common question with people that get dogs and have not had a lot of experience raising puppies before. And we have had a lot of experience raising puppies before because I bred working bloodline German Shepherds for police work and the biting dog sports for 35 years. And Cindy has for 20 or 25 years, although we both retired from breeding about 10 years ago. So what this puppy's doing is pretty common. And I'll back it up from the four month old stage to the six to eight week old stage when this puppy was still in a litter. The way puppies in litters play with one another, especially uh, these type of puppies, not just Catahoula puppies, but working dog puppies and a lot of breeds will look like they're fighting. They bite one another, they grab one another and drag them around, they scream and holler when they get bit. It's just the way that puppies interact to establish a relationship within the litter. I don't want to say a pack relationship, just a relationship. So when they come to a house, that's all they know. They don't know any other way. So you, you bring one of these puppies into your home and he wants to interact with you. He knows no other way than biting, chewing, growling. And to him, this is normal. It's really not any sign of aggression, although you get a four month old puppy and some of them can act like they have aggression in them, but the solution is still the same. When it comes with food, one of the things that we do with our dogs is we always feed our dogs either in a dog crate or in an X-Pen. We don't free feed them. We don't, when we do feed them in a crate or in a dog pen, we don't reach in and put our hands in the food bowl. We don't try and take the food bowl away. That's completely uncalled for. It's a great way to wreck your relationship with your dog. It's an old wives' tale and a stupid old wives' tale to think that you should be able to take your puppy's or your dog's food bowl away from them once you've given it to them. That just wrecks your relationship with the dog. So what we do is we put the food bowl in there and we leave it for 15 minutes. If the dog hasn't eaten, we open up the crate, we call the dog out. When the dog comes out, we either, it either comes out for a high value food reward, a little piece of steak, cheese, uh, or a high value toy. We close the door, take the puppy away. After the puppy's gone, we'll go take the food bowl out and put it away. Depending upon what you feed, and we feed a all natural diet, kind of looks like hamburger, quite frankly, we'll put it in the fridge and that's what they'll get for their nightly food. We feed our puppies twice a day. Some of the, some of the younger puppies uh, that are lightweight puppies, we're just currently raising a, a chihuahua puppy. When we got it, we fed it four times a day and then we did it three times a day. And then in the end, we're going to have it down to two times a day. So we don't allow our puppies to practice bad behavior. The more you allow it, the worse it's going to get, the more ingrained it's going to get. So that's why we'll keep a leash on the puppy if we think we have a problem with the puppy. We don't just take something away from our dog. 
we'll trade them for something of higher value. We try and keep high value food rewards or toys in our pocket, or we'll keep a bowl next to the dog crate of high value treats, be it uh, little pieces of cheese that we'll put in there at the beginning of the day. It can be some of this de these dehydrated food treats. Our dogs love them. And we'll trade the puppy for something that we think that it's going to be a little growly over. We try and think two steps ahead of what's gonna happen. So rather than wait until the puppy's growling, we then would take a piece of food and lure him away. No, why not just lure him away right out the beginning and show the dog that we're fair with him. We try and teach them that we're not going to be unfair with him. That's how you build a relationship to work with, with any dog. So we manage our puppy 100% of the time when they're young. We don't bring a dog or a puppy. We don't bring a puppy into our house and let them run around free range. We keep a leash on our puppy 100% of the time. It can be tethered to us, to our belt, and when we sit down, it can, be, it can lay next to us. If it's a problem laying next to us, we'll take the puppy and put it in an x -Pen. We'll take the puppy and put it in a dog crate. And by controlling the dog 100% of the time, they learn what our rules are to live with us. They're not living with a litter anymore, they're living with us. And by doing this, by managing them 100% of the time, and this isn't going to happen in a week or two. <laughs> we, we can, we, our, our Chihuahua puppy is now eight months old. It's never been off leash in our house. We have him in a neck, we have her in an X band. And the truth is, I probably need to do a little video like, like this on how we manage the X bands in our house because we have five of them in our house and they're set up for different purposes. They're not all the same. We have one for feeding, one for the living room when we're watching TV, and one for where it sleeps, one for downstairs, yada, yada. That's just the way it is. And I think that I will do a video on that because I think it's important. For many years, for 20 years, I've been telling people to use an X-Pen, but I really never showed them the concept of how to use an X-Pen to keep puppies satisfied and not stress them out by putting them in an X-Pen. But still, like when we bring our little Pip, our little Chihuahua out, she's on a leash all the time. She's with us. And if we let her run around, it doesn't take about two and a half seconds for a puppy to run behind a chair and pee and come back out. And then you have another problem because you've allowed it to rehearse bad behavior. But one thing that this, this person mentioned that she just tried to pet her puppy while it's eating, don't ever do that. There's, there's no positive reason to do that. It just runs the risk of creating a problem. So that's just gonna create tension between you and your puppy. So basically, you're going to set up patterns, positive patterns on how you handle your dog, rather than negative patterns that are gonna cause a, a negative relationship between you and your dog. We have an excellent seven hour video that we've done with one of our instructors, Michael Ellis, on how to raise a puppy in your home. If you are new to raising puppies, I would highly recommend that course.